Vietnamese women are gold diggers, extremely complicated and messy. Protect yourself, suit our client who is an American. Very difficult to verify those properties. We've seen many instances have a trial after 13 years. Asset protection as a foreigner, then you definitely want to get your negotiations are broken down. It's even harder to do in Vietnam because it's almost taboo. So in last week's episode, we talked about how the government can demolish or take away your home. And this week, we want to talk about how a husband a wife or significant other can take away all your assets in Vietnam. Last month, former supermodel and actress Bam Thi Ngoc Thuy, 43 years old, used to be the Marilyn Monroe of Vietnam, was called into court against her husband to split assets roughly about $12 million. Her husband, a Vietnamese American businessman named Mr. Wing, Duc Ang, 61 years old, in 2006, they were only after one week of meeting each other, they got married, and then roughly two years later, they were divorced. Mr. Ang, in 2010, filed a lawsuit in the People's Court of Ho Chi Minh City, claiming that roughly 39 real properties, cars, and stocks were his property before the marriage. So as a foreigner, what he did was he had all the properties to be put into her name. Does that sound familiar? That is one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they buy properties in Vietnam. To make things easier, you just put everything in your spouse's name and hope for the best. And that is what he did. So did you know that 70% of all marriages between a Vietnamese and a non-Vietnamese in Vietnam will end in a divorce within five years? So how does that make you feel? So today's episode, we're gonna talk about marriages and asset protection in Vietnam and what you can do in order to prevent that from happening to you. It's a part of anticipation and knowledge. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's get started. So let's talk a little about the history of the marriage itself. So in 2006, only after one week of meeting each other, uh, Mr. Ang and Ms. Thuy decided to get married. That already is a red flag in and of itself. And then after that, uh, with the two years passing, uh, they had two children and decided to divorce in 2008. So aside from just a dispute regarding the two children, there were other issues as well. The Superior Court of California, where the husband is a native, determined that uh, the wife had to return all the properties because the properties were not related to her and, and monies used to buy the properties were acquired before marriage. He said that the children were entitled to the properties if and when the wife, wife returned it. But in 2014, the wife claimed that the husband and wife did not sign a prenuptial agreement in order to determine that the properties were separate. Therefore, she claimed that they were community property. And then finally, the People's Committee in August of this year decided that they were ready to try the case and have a trial after 13 years because now they have all of the sufficient documents and evidence to present a trial. However, on August 18th, the trial began. Uh, it was postponed because of many of the lawyers and other interested parties were not available for that trial. Moreover, the husband requested to make changes to the list of assets. In fact, he wanted to remove 13 of the 39 assets, which included five villas in Phang Thiet, seven cars, and one motorbike that his wife already sold Thus, it would be very difficult to verify those properties. In addition, he wanted to claim $2.8 million of rental income from nine luxury apartments located in District 1 in Ho Chi Minh City, and also $500,000 of cash located in three bank accounts. He also rejected that any of the properties or assets were part of the community property because they were acquired with this money prior to the marriage and thus claiming them all groundless. So as a foreigner getting married with a Vietnamese in Vietnam, uh, subjecting to Vietnam law, so basically the Vietnam law is community property regime, 
which means that whatever is acquired during marriage will be divided equally between husband and wife upon divorce. We know that there are things that you can do, which is very important, is to draft what's called a prenuptial agreement by both parties in order to decide on what is separate and what is community property. We know that this is something that's very difficult to do in America and other developing countries, and it's even harder to do in Vietnam because it's almost taboo that uh, you're deciding to do an agreement prior to marriage. Thus, it's actually very difficult to convince the Vietnamese party in order to sign it. Of course, now it's a uh, contemporary times, mindsets have changed, people fully understand how they want to protect their assets. Women are also making their own money and more independent. So therefore, they're also willing to sign as well. So based on procedurally, especially in California law where I'm licensed, the requirement um, is you have to have a contract drafted by an attorney, and then you have to give a certain period of time for the other party to review the contract and seven, 14, or 21 days before they can sign. Also, adding to that, if the contract is in English, then you want to make sure that you translate to Vietnamese so the Vietnamese party can fully understand all the terms and conditions. After both sides are ready to sign, then you would need two witnesses in order to sign, or some state, three witnesses. And then, of course, it has to be notarized in front of a notary public. And if you're here in Vietnam, you actually have to go to the U.S. consulate uh, here on Le Yung in order to get it notarized. These are procedures you'll need. Uh, our team of uh, legal experts in the U.S. and Vietnam can draft the agreement, can advise, can uh, in both English and Vietnamese, translate it, and then help you execute as well. However, if your plan is to stay in Vietnam long term and avoid the complexities of asset protection as a foreigner, then you definitely want to get your Vietnamese passport. Uh, after you get the Vietnamese passport, you can get your national ID and with those documents, you can own assets, own property, and own land in Vietnam, similar to a local. That is very important. Uh, we've made many, many videos regarding the Vietnamese passport, national ID, so click on the right-hand corner to watch all those videos. But if you're not Vietnamese, but your Vietnamese parents or your foreign parents have left you assets in Vietnam, and they're rightfully yours and you want to claim them, the first thing you need to do is to do a valuation of the land or the property itself in order to know what its market value in case you want to sell it or you want to split it. The next step, it's essential to determine who the stakeholders are within that particular land or property. So if it's a piece of land, then you will look at the red book to determine uh, what is called title search on who owns it, how much they own, and where the actual property is itself. We've seen many instances where your parents might be the owner, but also some of the aunts or uncles or other relatives will also claim a stake because of some side deal or negotiations they have with your parents. So you gotta make sure you determine who the stakeholders are. Afterwards, negotiations we feel is the best way uh, to talk it through to your family on the personal side to resolve ownership, uh, splits and what to do with the property. However, if it happens that there's negotiations have broken down, there are too many personal issues and litigation is the path, we'd be happy to help you with a strategy for litigating and also getting the best outcome. Uh, so our law firm along with our uh, family law experts have uh, been involved in numerous cases throughout the years and they've presented many interesting fact patterns and also good and bad outcomes. I'm just gonna share with you three of those particular case studies uh, in order for you to get an example of what happens in Vietnam. The first story is the female in Vietnam who is a Vietnamese citizen uh, sued our client who is an American for one billion VND for a divorce and also child custody for 18 years. But what we found out was this lady actually created seven fake paternity tests and submitted to the court uh, for each of the men that she was suing, claiming that each one of them was the father of the particular child. She sued our client for a one billion VD case and also she proceeded with another lawsuit. Fortunately, we were able to find both of the other men who were sued, redid the paternity test and discovered, well, actually our client was the father and then we had to continue negotiations. 
but you got to be careful because there are fake paternity tests in Vietnam. The second scenario, our American clients have purchased various properties similar to Mr. Ang in Vietnam throughout the years and it was all in his uh, Vietnamese spouse's name. Total assets were roughly about 500,000 US dollars and then when they decided to divorce because all the properties were in her name, uh, she claimed that it was all her separate property and thus he had nothing and he could not claim anything to the property itself because he didn't keep track of all the monies transferred to pay for the properties throughout the year. And the third one was kind of a reverse scenario. It was a Vietnamese American female who married a Vietnamese male in Vietnam in order to bring him to America where he invested in what's called the EB-5 investor visa program of 500,000 US dollars. Then she decided that she was going to divorce him uh, and thus he was not able to bring his children to the United States and they had one more child together. All the assets that he owned in Vietnam were divided in Vietnam. The assets owned in the United States were divided in the United States. And then she even took it a step further and she took the child from Vietnam back to America during and for four years he was not able to see his child. So as you can see, the cases vary between losing assets, losing family, and also losing your children in custody. Thus, we want to say it's extremely complicated and messy in Vietnam, just like it is all around the world. Make sure that you know what you're getting into and how to protect yourself before you get married in Vietnam. So it's always great uh, that I share my opinion, uh, both first-hand experience being married in Vietnam and also of the uh, hundreds of cases that we've handled and also negotiated. Um, and I would say this, that just like anywhere in the world, marriage is uh, sacred, but it's also very complex. So when you are coming to Vietnam, fully understand the culture of why uh, people would or would not do a prenuptial agreement under cultural nuances, and also um, knowing who you're getting married to and what assets you have or they have around the world. Uh, more and more, I've seen that uh, prenuptial agreements are extremely common, especially amongst uh, Americans and Vietnamese, just because assets are getting larger, more diversified and in many different countries as well. But as always, you got to make sure that you protect yourself, but also show that you're committed to the marriage and that will make it last longer. And also it would help you understand what you need to do to protect yourself during the marriage as well. Um, with that said, I wouldn't say that uh, we are trying to paint a picture that Vietnamese women are gold diggers. It's really about financial stability. They want to have assets, their dedication to the marriage. And this is true all over the world. If a woman's going to marry a man, she has to make sure that there's economic financial stability in the relationship. And there are many, many successful marriages between foreigners and Vietnamese. For example, many of our collaborators that we've worked with on our videos, such as Phuc Map or Chad Kabanoff, uh, the chef, and also of Sunny Side of the Best Food Show. So we've actually talked and read about these particular individuals who've had successful marriages to Vietnamese women, and also I myself know many different stories as well. And as a Vietnamese American married to an intelligent, smart, and beautiful Vietnamese woman, I can tell you that I, I and many others do not mind that the assets belong to the person that will be better equipped to handle it. Of course, uh, I'm also international tax attorneys. I understand different citizenships and tax implications. So that helps me a lot in determining uh, asset protection. And I definitely want to share that knowledge with you, um, help you come up with a structure and a plan on how you can protect your assets in Vietnam and also globally, but also to have a great successful marriage. So if you're seeking to safeguard your assets before marriage or to reclaim your properties after marriage, do not hesitate to contact our team. We are a team of legal experts uh, in US and also Vietnam law with over 15 years of experience helping individuals protect their assets. So that's our video today. Hopefully we provided great information for you to protect your assets in Vietnam. 
Uh, on behalf of Jung Global, my name is Ken Jung. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, make sure you like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, comment below about your experiences on marriage in Vietnam, and also click on the bell for notifications. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one.